Hey guys, new video here. Um, did a longer stream today, 14 hours, and I want to talk about the farming session because they went pretty well. Um, over here, I have these three tabs. Uh, I use these to track our Excellence Next returns, which is a program that tracks like your, your stash value and character value and stuff like that. So as you can see, here is like kind of the returns for it. And uh, what did we get out of uh, 14? Well, there was like two hours of downtime where I was playing my hideout, but about like 12 hours of um, kind of like go, 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 trying to be fast with our uh, barrel chambers and uh, get some doctors, get some loot. So. Um, the data from last stream, this was all like one continuous stream. You can watch the previous VOD if you want to see like where all the shenanigans happens. And it was, uh, yeah, I think you'll be presently surprised. But uh, I'll just go over the data so that you don't have to watch a 12-hour VOD. So um, in pure exalts, we dropped 13 pure exalts. Uh, I ran 101 uh, barrel chambers, I believe. Here's the map watch data. So 100, oh, 103 maps completed. Um, so uh, in pure exalts, we dropped 13 pure exalts. Uh, there's 14 here because the shards combine. So 13 pure exalt drops from monsters, and then about one and a half exalt drops from uh, shards from harbingers and things like that. So pretty good right there. Um, that that alone equates to about one exalt per hour, which is uh, you know if you're a new player, one exalt per hour is pretty good. Uh, and then we have the simulacrum, and the simulacrum is pretty good. I mean, these are about 90C. If you sum in bulk, maybe you can get like 100. But let's just say that they're like 90C, and uh, so it's about I think it's about 11 exalts um, in value. Uh, these were all created in the session by picking up the splinters on the barrel chambers, and splinters are very good. You know, sometimes you get uh, 90, sometimes you get 100, sometimes you get 106. Sometimes you don't get any because you fail the fog, and you get like two of them. Um, but on average, it's very, very high. And kind of divide these uh, like these, multiply by 300, divide by the number of maps you run to get the average of splinters per map. So pretty darn good there. You know, completed some legion pylons. So Marraketh is like almost one exalt. It's about half an exalt. Pretty good. And the doctors. So uh, we were able to drop four doctors in the first 51 maps. It was insane. So yeah, on the 51st map I ran of the stream. The fourth doctor dropped, and uh, even with like these current results, 103 maps done for four doctors. You know, about 20, uh, 26 maps uh, per doctor is amazing, right? Because it's an extremely rare card, and I was very happy with those returns. So, how did I set this up for the speed farming? Well, if you take a look at this tab here, so basically what I did is I had I rolled like as many barrels as I could. I think it was like 100 something, right? I saw some leftovers here. And then in these columns, I set up like these little, little barriers of, of prophecies. And I set up four scarabs um, for every map that was global because I, I hate downtime, right? I really focus on the strategy of the hideout is lava. You want to get out of the hideout as much as possible, right? So if you look at my map watch data, um, look at my downtime. So... My average for the barrier chambers is uh, six minutes and twenty six um, six minutes and twenty six minutes. Sorry, six minutes and twenty six seconds total of like hideout time and map time. Now that's not that's not like too bad because six minutes. You know, when you're adding a lot of things to the um, to the map, it's gonna take longer. Right? There's so much lead content, so you get like a Cassie, a breach, things like that. Uh, but look at my downtime: two minutes and seven seconds of downtime. I was in my hideout 32% of the time, which is really, really bad. And obviously, I'm streaming, so I do take breaks. I like I first, for example, the first two hours, I was like messing on a hideout. We were watching YouTube videos sometimes in between. So the, it's pretty skewed. But you really want to embody the hideout is lava, right? You're trying to narrow down like the variance in between the big drops. Um, and there are a lot of big drops going on uh, if you just keep playing, 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 and don't get discouraged. Uh, additionally. Another thing I'm going to show you is uh, I'll show you what it looked like when I first set it up so that you guys can get a better picture of this. Give me one moment here. I'm going to my Twitter because I posted this photo um, on the Twitters. Um, and then here we go. So one moment. Here it is. So basically right here, if you look, I pre-rolled all the maps on the top right. If I have like reflect because you can run reflect when you get the sextant. Um, I put those over there in here. I have some other I have some other rules like nemesis um, maps. I put in the bottom right in case I got the nemesis three, nemesis three sextant because I was using awaken sextant. So if you look at these columns, this is how the tab started out as and on the left is how that how it ended up after all the running. Um, these four scarabs is what I use. They're global, which means that 
no matter what sections you roll, there's not really that much counterplay. You can just put them in and go. There is one thing I didn't keep in mind, and that is the metamorph. There's a metamorph section where, like, if you put it in, it just doesn't use a sec the scarab, I think. So you have to change that out for something else. But everything else is great. Like, Legion Pylon, it doesn't matter if a Legion um, section pops up or a natural one shows up. It just adds another one, and they can't be active at the same time. Divination is just flat multiplier to divination cards. You're looking for the that to multiply your doctor. Metamorph has a lot of rares in it, so it's good both for Nemesis is three and it's good for i'm um, just adding a little bit of juice at the end i did get actually a doctor card from the metamorph at the end once um, it was in, in a map that I dropped two doctors right in one map that was pretty crazy uh and then the harbinger is also global so harbinger there's a harbinger sexton so if you get the harbinger sexton fantastic you have harbingers um if you don't get it they're still amazing and and all of these scares you look at the price of them are ultra cheap the metamorph is probably like the the most expensive one i was buying at like eight or nine c per um eventually raising like 10 12 c per but they are really good and so it is actually budget so even if you you know there's no way you can lose money in the mapping in the style um the prophecies that i used were uh, alba uh that is like if i didn't have a sexton specific master i'd use alba on every one of them if i could and i also at the same time i probably proc some rats um, you can also proc Hungering Swarm or like um, Curse Acquire. Those are global monsters because we're running beyond, right? So um, I, I was making sure to run Alba, uh, Rats, because Barrel Chambers, it procs Rats, not Frogs. And another one is Tempest. So Tempest is overall 30% multiplier. You have a 25% multiplier from the Awakening bonus, 1.25 times um, times 30. I think it's like 37% in case quantity. If you have Magic Find, it multiplies that as well. Uh, so it gets pretty nuts, right? I don't have any Magic Find in this test. I, I ran zero Magic Find. I had, I think, like 16 rarity on a suffix prefix on a rare item I have, but that wasn't intended, and that doesn't affect div cards. Um, in terms of what I what else I did, uh, in terms of the rolling, I would ouch 20% uh, quality on all of them, then ouch, then filter for reflect and cannot regen, take those off, and then I'll just... I'll corrupt all of them. And uh, unidies are pretty great because unidies text and all the rare is very powerful. And then what I did is um, after corrupting them, I just line these up. And now this tab, it's a quad tab. It's very easy to set up because you know that a quad tab column is 24. So just grab 24 of these things, put it down the column, and you're good to go. The reason I did this is because if you look at the fragment tab right here, you see this? For me, it is very, very hard to like when I'm doing it one map at a time to pick the correct things. Cause look at this, the ambush looks like the Parandis, right? And like the uh, the Div kind of looks like the Harbinger and like the, the Elder kind of looks like the Torment cause they're both kind of green. So it's like, it takes a lot of time um, of like micromanagement. Whereas with this strategy, uh, you can just go, just go, 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 you just pick the four, put it in the device and just run. And that is fantastic. So I really like that, that kind of like ouch and go to the next level, um, if if you will, right? Because it didn't really matter. Once again, there was only one section I would look out for that would change this up, and that's the metamorph section because it doesn't apply with the scarab. Um, so that's uh, that's basically how I rolled it. So ouch, um, chisel, chisel, ouch, uh, corrupt, and then filtering out the ones I didn't want to do. So that's reflect and um, and cannot regen, and that put in after ice with the four scarabs, and I'd run beyond beyond on everything because it's like just so good, it's so fun. And uh, that's it. That's that's how I set it up. And uh, it doesn't really matter if you do tier sevens or tier elevens uh, or tier fourteens. They're all pretty good. I'm doing tier fourteens because I I just like a little bit extra XP. So that's my video. And it was an amazing farm session. And if you have any questions, you can ask me on my stream. Uh, okay. Thank you everyone for watching my video. Bye. Bye guys. Bye.